Vsauce, Kevin here, and this briefcase contains the entire universe and everything that makes humanity human. <laughs> oh, that's it? This is it? Paper dollar, pencil, sugar cube, playing cards, Rubik's cube? Let me explain. Fold a piece of paper. Again. And again. A sheet of paper is about four thousandths of an inch. And to get the number of layers after folding, we make two to the power of folds. We start with one, then every fold raises that power one more. My folding is not going well. The world record for paper folding is only 12 folds. If we could fold it 30 times, it'd be thick enough to reach space. 42 gets us to the moon. At 103 folds, the thickness of this paper would be around 93 billion light years. So basically the diameter of our entire observable universe. A piece of paper is the size of the universe. And you're inside this sugar cube. In fact, we all are, or could be. Atoms are tiny and their fundamental particles are even smaller. A proton is like a femtometer, one quadrillionth of a meter. The simple way to think of our body's makeup is that atoms are a collection of particles with a fair amount of empty space between them. Quantum physics shows us that's not actually true and that a lot is happening in what appears to be 99.99999% empty space. That space matters, but if we compressed the atoms of the human race into a tight ball and ignored what's in between them, all nearly 8 billion of us would fit inside this sugar cube. This is us. 7.8 billion of us inside here. We can't all be unique, right? Right. No, wrong. About 108 billion humans have been born throughout history. If you're one in a million, like my mom told me I am, that means there have been 108,000 humans exactly like you. That's not good. How can anybody possibly stand out? I know, just do something no human has ever done before. Like what? Shuffle a deck of cards. Okay, people have done that, but not the same. Michael mentioned this in his math magic video. It goes like this. You've got 52 cards in a deck. The number of possible combinations is 52 factorial. So 52 times 51 times 50 times 49. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the way down to one. Cool. That's uh, that number different orders of a shuffled deck. Every time you shuffle and deal, you've just created something that's virtually guaranteed to never have been done before and seriously unlikely to ever be done again. So ignore your 108,000 clones. Opportunities to be unique are actually everywhere. And there's no limit to what you can do because you, my friend, you, you, you watching this video, you're a supercomputer. This Rubik's Cube has six sides of a three by three grid, and each square is one of six colors. The question is how many permutations exist? That's a good question. I think of it often. The answer is this. 43 quintillion, 252 quadrillion, 3 trillion, 274 billion, 489 million, 856 thousand. That's it. And every single possible state of the cube can be solved in 20 moves or fewer. That's called God's number. And it took Google 36 CPU years of computing power to determine. Du Yu Shang solved the classic three by three by three Rubik's cube in 3.47 seconds. Maybe it takes you longer, but you're mentally capable of processing any one version of 43 quintillion problems and solving it in a surprisingly low number of steps. You solve problems in the world. And if you're like me, you go outside once a month to get more peanut butter and you notice, hey, there's other people around. This helps connect us, but you've got to think about it the right way. This doesn't actually have intrinsic value. Money isn't actually worth anything. It's paper, but it does represent a way for everyone to exchange what they've got. A thing, a talent, whatever, for what someone else has. The Aztecs used cocoa beans and the ancient Chinese used cowrie shells. I've got a PlayStation. I like making videos and I want a pygmy goat. It's a lot easier for me to use something that allows me to transfer my old PlayStation and my video production skills and then use that to buy a pygmy goat than to find a pygmy goat farmer who really needs a PS4 
PS1 and a Paradox video. We have a system that converts what we've got into what we want and gives someone else a way to get what they want with what we've got. And it's not just about money. Currencies like love and trust and loyalty spend nicely too. You can be you with others. That's why we're capable of making incredible things. Such as a number two pencil. It's like Leonard Reed's eye pencil. It shows the sheer insanity of human cooperation that results in making something as basic as a pencil. Someone farmed the incense cedar. Someone built the tractors for that farm. Someone made the wheels for the tractor. Someone mined the graphite and clay for the lead. Others mined the metal for the ferrule. No one planned this. We just all did our little piece and others combined those pieces with our needs and desires to make a thing everyone uses, but no individual person could ever make themselves. We can't even comprehend what's happening in this sugar cube because it's too complex. Where's my universe paper? We do all of this because we know what zero is. It's not even just nothing. It's the absence of value. Value that exists somewhere, just not where zero is. If infinity is so impossibly large that we can't even really understand it, zero is an impossibly deep void we process mostly by what it isn't. We do understand the power of something that's a placeholder to make and identify greater things, but that on its own is sort of a terrifying lack of meaning. Zero makes the pencils happen, and it's the absence of pencils. It's never getting what we want. It's never solving a Rubik's Cube. It's the inability to be unique. It's in action. It's an empty sugar cube. It's being in this unfathomably large paper universe and fighting against the prospect of being and meaning nothing. You know what it is, but you're everything because you're not zero. The world is big, the universe is complex, and you can visualize, conceptualize, and appreciate some of the most complicated elements of life by studying and researching and experimenting, but also by messing around with some of the junk lying around your bedroom. Or stored in your extremely cool briefcase. And as always, thanks for watching.